running great. In this video, we're going to share with you how to do the OTG on the go mod for your PlayStation Classic. What that does is if you're watching my videos recently, you have to put some sort of hub here in order to still have a port for player two and you need to power it. Some people don't like all that clutter. So in this tutorial, what we're going to do is install an OTG cable, which isn't as easy as it seems. It's not a plug and play thing. You have to install some software as well. But what we're ultimately going to do is something like this, where we're going to do a pass through. And so our power to our system is going to, we're going to install this little OTG pass through and we'll be able to run our games and our ROMs and our backups through the back of the system here. And what that allows us to do is a, it gives you a lot more flexibility as far as your hacking and things like that, but also it cleans up the whole front of the system here. So this is a bleem sync tutorial. Stay tuned on step-by-step -step instructions, how to do this. There are a few things you'll need to buy the OTG cable itself, the 128 gigabyte USB 3.0 Samsung and uh, some sort of USB 2.0 and a 16 gig, a 4 gigabyte, even a 512 megabyte I've seen work. Um, I'll put a link to um, each one of those that will work for your PS Classic. So I thought this was a really good explanation. Boot with Bleem Sync, boot again with the kernel in the update folder, and then lastly put your auto Bleem or your AutoBleam pre-made image you downloaded online, or if you bought one of those true blue USB drives, now you can plug it in from the back of your system. It's three easy steps. You do need to download a few things. I'm gonna walk you through step by step. It is not difficult. Then again, you really don't need to do this either. You can easily have a hub in the front of your PlayStation Classic, but a lot of people like this mod. Here are the four different websites you may need. You, may, you might be able to skip some of these steps. The first one is a FAT32 formatter. If you're using a bigger than a 32 gigabyte um, USB, you need this program here. It's free. That's why I'm using this one. There's a couple others on the market as well. Um, go ahead and make sure you're selecting the right drive. You're not formatting something you don't want to format. Make sure it's Sony, all capitals, and uh, go ahead and click start. All right, so now your thumb drive is ready. The other thing you may need is 7-Zip or WinRAR. 7-Zip uh, is totally free. Some of these files we're going to be downloading need to be unrarred or unzipped, and this will allow us to do that. Uh, you may want AutoBleam. If, you don't already, if you're using the True Blue or you already have an image, you don't need this, but if you're starting from scratch, you want to go ahead and get AutoBleam. I would recommend either the Fool or the Retro Boot package. Um, the Fool gives you all the artwork for all the different regions. And then the retro boot gives you some additional features for playing other systems as well. So both are good base images to have. Um, in this video, we're going to be messing with the full. And then you need Bleem Sync. This is, allows us to do OTG on the go cables. So go ahead and click that upper link there. Go ahead and save that. And then the other link is the kernel. You'll see a little button there for the kernel. Um, you need to right click that. See, I clicked it and see what happens. No, we go back and right click it and say save target as. When you do a save target as, it'll allow you to actually download the file you need. So right click, save target as, and you can see now I'm able to save it to my download folder. All right, next up, we wanna go ahead and unzip our files here. Um, you wanna do that for your auto bleam, and you wanna do that for your bleam sync. So just right click, save and zip, and then you can extract it into a folder right there. Do the same thing for AutoBleam if you need it. We'll need that later. But there you go. There's our folder. And these are the files we need. So we formatted. Remember, we formatted earlier. So all we got to do is grab these two folders. You don't want the whole thing. You just want these two folders. Drag them into our Sony drive, which, remember, was already formatted to FAT32. When this is done transferring, we're going to remove it from our PC and go ahead and put it in our PlayStation Classic. All right, so here we are back at the PlayStation Classic. Your, green, your amber light may be on. Remember, you have to unplug prior to, so make sure you unplug. Unplug it, make sure that there's no lights on. We're gonna go ahead and plug in our USB 2.0 that has auto bleam on it for the first time. Now we can go ahead and re-plug in the PS Classic. Wait for that amber light to turn back on, which just takes a few moments. And you can see even we're getting power to the USB there. And then we're gonna go ahead and turn on the PlayStation Classic. Now the screen you're seeing behind the Bleem Sync, that's from the, you know, I was doing another build earlier. This is what it'll look like. You'll see a Sony first. This is my, that was just a mistake from my capture card. 
don't but this is what you'll see and then this will be your first time seeing the bleem sync logo here and you notice if you have an led indicator on your usb drive it'll be lighting up but also you notice on the playstation classic in that right hand corner i'm getting a green and a red light green red green red this is going to take quite a bit of time so just let this sit here go grab a drink go hang out do not remove the USB, do not remove the power. You could potentially brick your system at this setup, okay? Again, remember we're using a USB 2.0 because it doesn't consume as much power. Make sure you're using that. If you can't get to the Bleem Sync screen to begin with, it's probably the USB drive you're using or you made some mistake like you didn't unzip the files or put the correct files on the USB or you didn't format the USB FAT32. I've seen those issues over and over again. Make sure you did it correctly. So we're almost there. You'll notice it's installing custom payload now. Be patient. You need to wait till this gets back to an amber light. So we're going red, now it's off, now it's red, and then you might have a long off here, and you're thinking, oh, it's done, it's off. Wait, wait for the amber light to come back. Okay, now we're done. Now remove the USB, and let's go back to the computer with our USB plugged into our computer. All right, and then on our computer, you can see we plugged it back in, and there's all these new files here. So um, what you want to do first is back it up. That's the first thing you want to do. The top folder there is your backups. You might want to just drag that over to your hard drive on your computer just to have a copy of that. Be better safe than sorry. But um, our main task here besides backing up is to add the new uh, boot file, the payload. And so... What we did was remember we downloaded that file earlier. That's when we saved target as there it is there on my hard drive. And all we're gonna do is control C or right click and copy. And we're gonna go to that bleem sync, the last folder update. And we're gonna go ahead and paste it right there. And let's go ahead and back to our PlayStation Classic now. Okay, so same thing as before. Make sure you unplug your PlayStation Classic. Okay, so we're gonna unplug it. Go ahead and plug our new USB with the right new payload update on it. Plug back in our PS Classic. Wait for that amber light to turn on. There it is, amber light's on. Go ahead and power on. And again, remember this is my capture card. It leaves the last image it saw on there. So now it should boot up with the Sony logo. You should get sound and everything if you have your speakers plugged in. And this time you're gonna see a different message up at the top here in just a moment. Wait, wait, wait. You're going to have a blank screen for a little bit. Just be patient. Notice that the lights are doing some different things though. And then it'll say updating kernel in three, two, one. It blinks, 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 goes off. And right after this point, it will um, do a couple green lights, but just wait, wait, wait until it goes back to amber. Better safe than sorry, wait an additional minute. But once you're on amber, you're good to go. So I'm just making a quick auto bleem image. I downloaded auto bleem. I showed you earlier in the video. Go ahead and copy all those folders to a fresh USB thumb drive. This time I'm using a 3.0, 3.1 thumb drive, the Samsung, because it's quicker and it has a lot more data. And with this OTG mod, we're going to be able to power that thing just fine. Um, so I'm transferring that over. And then I'm also getting my ROMs. ROMs you can find all over the internet. I'm sure someone in the comments will help you out. Uh, you could do .bin files or you could do uh, .pbp files. A lot of people like the .pbp files because they're compressed. You can put more games on a 128 gigabyte. And then what you're going to do is in the games folder on your new formatted thumb drive, that's, remember, FAT32, name Sony, you're going to go ahead and drag and drop those ROMs. And then we're going to go ahead and go back to our PS Classic and boot this uh, custom image up for the first time. All right, remember we got this unplugged. Let's go ahead and plug in our image. And then plug this in to the back of the. All right. Look at that clean setup now. Let's wait for the light. There's our light. Let's go ahead and plug it. We should get an auto bleem boot screen here, not the standard PlayStation one. You see it's glowing amber green, amber green. That's already a really good sign. And there we go. Import, let's go ahead and scan in our new games we just added. We added 12 games, fresh start. Let's go ahead and hit start. And then there we go. We can add hundreds more on this 128 gigabyte SD card, but I just added some A games on here. And it was that easy. Am I supposed to say, oh, F-R-I-N-D is friend, T-T-G is target. 
going to turn this off really quick. And then I kind of want to try it with the cool blue really quick. It's a good sign when it does yellow, blue, yellow, or green, amber, green, amber. I have a feeling this is going to work just fine. And there we go. Booyah. Running great. So there you have it. How to do the OTG. Let me know if you have any questions. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And we'll catch you on the next one.